Welcome again to the Quantum Yoga Podcast. Uh, today we have Patrick Boats, who is a biophysics researcher, electrophysiologist, biologist, and a uh, developer based in Belgium. And a uh, my goodness, I you you do, I do, I've been watching some of your presentations on uh, YouTube, and they are amazing mind-blowing i can't wait for you to introduce this stuff to to our audience welcome to the program patrick it's very good to have you on well okay that, thank you thank you for for asking me to make this print presentation and uh, in fact it's a good time for this presentation because i will put together a, a lot of new findings uh, and uh, you you will see it it's now a long time ago that i'm working uh, on the relationship between frequencies and the body and it it was not quite easy because when you try to make the relationship to what you can find on the web or in book, there are so many different things that it's very, very difficult to understand and to make the relationship. You, you, you are wondering who, who is right, who is wrong. And, and so at the beginning, I made some choices and make, uh, in my research, and I, uh, I, I took some, some kind of direction. And then now, uh, I think it's a, a good turning point when I can put all this information together and see that there is a relationship between all this information. And in fact, I made, well, since years, I made a lot of mistakes, well, two major mistakes. Uh, the first one is that uh, I know that the body it works like an hologram, and I was explaining to to my patient that say that you 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 find the whole body everywhere inside the body, but my mistake was to forget that it could be also used in the other way, the, the way back, and say that if we have a, a, a specific frequency somewhere in the body. It can be also somewhere else in the body, as the body is an hologram. This was my first mistake, and you will see the, that uh, it's, it's very important. Uh, as a primer for what you're about to present, can you talk just shortly about some of the, the various research that you have combed through and what you are, because you're really bringing a lot of disparate, a lot of different types of research together. As, a, as a, the little bit that I understand, there is some HRV research that you're bringing into this. There is some uh, neuroscientific research and EEG electrophysiology research. There's cranial sacral research that you're bringing into this presentation. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of different things. But, uh, well, you know, it's a, maybe... A little bit of my history, and uh, uh, I, at the beginning, I'm a biologist, and then um, I worked for several years uh, in uh, hospitals, taking care of uh, uh, old and demon people, and um, I was very interested with alternative medicine at this time. And so I began a cursus of sacrocranial uh, therapy. And, uh, but I will explain more during the presentation. And uh, in fact, this was the beginning of, of my research because uh, in sacrocranial therapy, you, you learn to feel with your hand a very slow wave which is inside the body, which is a pressure wave. I, I will show it and, and, and explain a little bit more. And this was the, the beginning of my, my research and trying to understand what was happening inside the body with frequencies, uh, the relationship between the different frequencies and the body. And then it leads me to, uh, to measure uh, art rate uh, and art parameters, uh, art coherence, and uh, recently uh, brain waves. But I will explain more during the presentation step by step. And uh, well, this is a, a little bit of my background. But the, the, the aim of my research was to understand the relationship between uh, 
the frequency, the different rhythm, and uh, and the body, and how the also about healing, about uh, how we can heal with, uh, with while using rhythm and, and frequencies. Okay, <laughs> is it That's okay? Right. Yeah, go ahead, take us away. Okay, uh, so so I was explaining. So the the body is like an hologram, and the 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 best proof that the body is an hologram is that you. And you cannot produce a sound with your voice that your ears cannot catch. And it was demonstrated a long time ago by a, a French searcher, which is called Tomatis, and which she's making uh, healing with uh, sound therapy. And well, everybody knows that when you're stressed, your voice is changing. And these are two voice analyses. So the top one here is the spectrum, the analysis spectrum of an old and healthy person. And you see the spectrum is filled, completely filled with frequencies. And the lower curve, the lower spectrum, is young and stressed boy, which is in school exams. And you see there are a lot of missing frequencies. So what we're looking at is um, 125 hertz to 8,000 hertz. Yes, yes. And they are, what, are they just talking normally? Are they saying a particular word or tone? Uh, well, yes. In fact, what, well, we need to, to have um, happiness and sadness in the same spectrum. So I make a, a recording about two minutes and I'm asking the, the person to, to talk about things that she, uh, she liked and things that uh, they, they don't like. And then I, I, I draw a, a spectrum analysis. And you, you will see that there are, it's very important because there is a relationship between this way of analysis, the, the body, and, the, and other way of analysing the body. Okay. And so this is my second... Um, mistake is to try to use perfect math to to understand what's happening in the body and in fact if even in, in music you, you see here uh, uh, in music music is uh, uh, the relationship uh, between music and uh, harmonics uh, is here on the right you see it has a, a fundamental frequency and then two times three times four times and so in music we will have ratio of 2, 1.5, 1.25. But if we apply to the music the, this ratio, it's not perfect. You see, there is a difference between if we take the C as a fundamental and we go to the G, which is normally a fifth, you see the, the 1.5 doesn't give the same result as the, the music notes. And well, they, well, they say that this is the difference, they call it comma in music. Well, well I don't, it's too long to explain, but what we must uh, remember is that it's not perfect, but it's working. And this was my second mistake because I wanted to get really perfect ratio while using mathematic perfect result. And, and you will see it's not the case, but once you, you forget this, everything gets clear and you will see in the, in the next slide. Also, what is very important is that uh, the use of low frequencies. We are, when we are talking about frequencies, in fact, we are talking about uh, what, light frequencies, microwave frequencies, uh, voice frequencies, which are quite high frequencies, but we are not used to, to think of frequency with very low frequencies. And these low frequencies will be called rhythm cycles. And when we are looking at the base of communication of um, what is living, uh, you will see that the, the atoms have a very high uh, frequencies and then molecules a lower frequency, organs, lower frequency, cells, lower frequency, organs, again lower and lower and lower. And the more the system will be organized, the lower will be the, the, the communication, the basic communication frequencies. And 
this was, was related to what I've learned when I was um, a student uh, in sacrocranial therapy that we were using lower frequency about uh, six times per minute, 0.1 hertz. This is what we were trying to catch with our hands. And you will see that this is a very, very important uh, uh, knowledge also. Well, okay, and you see that in the, in the world, uh, in, in nature, there are very, very low frequency, uh, a, year fre a year cycle, a 10 year cycle. And so it's very important also to make the relationship between frequencies and what we call rhythm, which, is, which are quite very low, low frequencies. And in fact, uh, I had a chance that the, um, the school where I learned sacrocranial therapy, uh, one of my teacher was the first guy who made the relationship between what the, the, the famous uh, rhythm that we can feel with our hands was uh, a blood uh, pressure variation. And he was the first a uh, guy who, d who demonstrated with a very, very old system. Uh, it's, it was a, some kind of wrist they, they placed uh, on their hand and uh, with a, a printer and, a, well, a very old device. But he was the, the, the first one to make the relationship between this. And now, uh, well, we, we have... Well, more recent sensor. Uh, this is one of the sensors we are using in our app. Uh, you put it on your finger. It's a, a light sensor, so the light is coming through your finger. And uh, this light will change uh, according to the blood flow. And these are the pulses here uh, of the, the blood flow variation uh, inside uh, your finger. And this is the, on, on the right here. You, you see that this is the well, the display of all the, the, the small vessel that you can uh, see in the body, and this is the foot of a horse. And you see that even on the, the foot of a horse, there are a small, a lot of very small vessels, and that's the reason why we can feel. Well, it needs a lot of training, but it, it's like uh, tasting good wine. Uh, in, in, with a lot of training, you can feel this. Uh, blood uh, pressure variation with your hands. And, and I think it's important, I've heard you mention previously, that what you're talking about is a mechanical wave. It's not an electrical, uh, it's not an electrical signal, correct? Yes, yes, it's a, yes, it's a mechanical wave. And this is it here. You see on the left, this is one of the the pulses, the, the blood flow, and here on the right, it's one minute display. And you see uh, what's happening is that it's going up and down. So this is a wave. And this wave is going up and down because of the movement of the tissues inside your finger according to the, the, the variation of pressure. So the, if the pressure is changing inside your finger, the, the, the movement of the tissue will also change. And this is what we are measuring here. And you see the, here are the pulses uh, in blue. It's an analysis of the wave, uh, the slow wave. And in red here, it's uh, HRV. And so also HRV is changing according to the this this, uh, this pressure wave, and this is what we are measuring with uh, our apps. Uh, one which is called iDrive, and which is mainly designed for measuring art uh, parameters, uh, coherence, art coherence, and also another one which is Flame in Mind, uh, which is which was uh, at the beginning dedicated to measure brain wave, but uh, brain wave according to a deep meditating state, bliss states, and uh, according to Dan uh, research. But in, we have also uh, the opportunity in this app to, to measure the, uh, the, blood, uh, the blood flow and the blood parameters also. In this. So, so I just have to pause for a second because what you're saying, after showing that the visual of 
the circulatory system, at least in part, you know, with the horse foot and the body, the whole circulatory system is pulsing, is vibrating in yes. a way based on the heart and the breath. Yes, there is, but I will talk more about breath uh, at the end of the presentation. And I think that it will be very interesting for you because it's also re related to yogi, yogi breath. And, uh, and uh, yeah, in fact, each time you breathe in, uh, if you're healthy, your heart rate is increasing. And when you breathe out, your heart rate will decrease. I will explain more later in, in the presentation. But this is what is happening here. And, you know, when I was learning uh, sacrocranial therapy and I, uh, I have learned to, 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 uh, to have better feelings uh, with my hands, but also it helped me to have better feelings inside my body. And uh, when I was trying to catch my own sacrocranial wave inside my body, because you can, when you're trained a little bit, you can feel it. Uh, what happened is that when you make this connection uh, and you don't think of anything else, you let it go, uh, the, your, your breathing turn on to this sacrocranial wave. So be, you begin to breathe at this very slow rhythm, which is about uh, a 10 second ryth rhythm, so uh, six times per, per minute. But it depends. So, but it's not a fixed uh, frequency. So it can be f uh, four, five, six, seven, it depends. But, and it will change at the, uh, the, from the morning to the afternoon to the evening. And uh, it, it's changing all the time. But it's, it's around the, these kind of frequencies. And this was the, the first thing that uh, I noticed. So it said, why, why should I, uh, what is it about the, this uh, slow frequency we are breathing automatically on when we, we make this connection? And this, the second thing that happened is that when I was completely used to, to do this kind of practice, uh, sometimes I got something else which was happening. So I, I've... I changed my breath and it was a much slower breath and it can go up to one per minute, uh, to one and a half per minute, but a very, very slow breath rhythm. And uh, well, as far as I know, this is kind of a breath that is uh, used by yogi. And so my question was, what's happening inside my body about this, uh, this frequency? What is the relationship between the frequencies, the rhythm, and, and the body? And this was the beginning of my research. And so I tried to understand and to, well, I take a look on, uh, on books and on the web and try to, to understand the, the relationship between frequency, rhythm, and the body. And well, the, one of the the most thing that you can get is uh, this kind of representation, but each chakra related to uh, music notes. You can also have the, the different part of the body related to metals, to planets, to, well, a lot of, uh, a lot of things, uh, organs and things like that. And there are also two, a uh, different person who makes some uh, research and try to to extract uh, well well to to take information about the, the frequency inside the body so you see here it's a single note and here they're all trying to understand the, the different uh, frequency uh, on the related to the different part of the body uh, one it is tomatis which is um, a therapy that i'm using with my patient uh, it's a music therapy and uh, it's, this music therapy is based on a first test, which is uh, a near test that I, and uh, so I'm measuring the, the way that the person is, uh, is listening, well, how the, this person can catch the different frequencies, which frequencies are too high, which frequencies are missing, and according to this, we, we create specific, um, music sounds uh, to to help to to recover good uh, hearing curves and 
from for Tomatis, the, the lower part of the body uh, was around one um, one hundred hertz, and the top of the body eight eight thousand. And well, in fact, there is a good relationship between the lower frequency in the lower part of the body and the high frequency in the upper part of the body, because uh, if you want to make uh, a bell with uh, a very heavy, a very low sound, you will create a, a big and heavy bell, which are the, the, the bone on, and the muscle on the, the lower part of the body. And if you want to create a, a bell with a higher sound, it will be a small bell with a, and a very thin bell. And you see that all the bones here are bigger on the lo lower part, and the, the, the more you are going to to the top of the, the body, the more the, the bones will be small, and then you have the skull, which is a very thin, uh, a very thin bone. So the, the relationship is quite good, and the results that we have with uh, this kind of analysis are, are quite good too. Another person was O'Shea, who, <laughs> who made also the same kind of analysis. And he is also beginning at, at around uh, one, 100 on the lower part of the body. But when he arrived at the top, it's 1,000. So you see there is a 10 factor between, between them. So who is right, who is wrong, uh, what should I believe? It's, it was not really not easy with, with all this information. And also uh, these two uh, way of analysis were completely different than uh, the single musical note. So uh, we, we, were, we had two, three different completely things. What Another, the, can I yes? pause you for a second? Because yes, sure. and tell me if this is something you'll talk further and we can, we can bookmark it for them. But... I saw in a presentation that you gave, uh, and I think it was in relationship to Tomatis and hearing testing, that there are certain frequencies that are harder, that are either, that somehow they're out of normal range, too high, too low. People hear them, they're too sensitive to them, they're, yes. they're not hearing them properly due to previous trauma in their lives. Yes. And... And that uh, there is a, you can overlay a, a audi an audiology test between what they can hear outside and what they can hear inside with bone conduction and look at the differential between those two and identify how the trauma is affecting these specific frequencies, which then helps you to look at the spine and the yeah. area of the body that was affected. Is that, is that yeah. correct? Yes, yes, it's correct. I will show it, I, I think I will show it in the next slide, one of the next slides. Maybe you can come back to me at this moment. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so uh, another guy, uh, which make a lot of tests also um, about frequency, the relationship between frequencies and the bodies, is Paul Nogier. Paul Nogier is a guy who, uh, make acupuncture uh, in the ears and he, he has done a lot of tests sending pulse light to the body at different frequencies and see the the, the pulse reflex the, the blood pulse reflex uh, of the of the body and so he, he has made a map with uh, different region and they call uh, he called a b c d up to g and uh, he has noticed that uh, in fact uh, the, the, the body was responding to different frequency and there uh, both uh, the relationship between this frequency was an octave so a two factor and once he, he went Above the latest one, above the, the G1, uh, in fact, he came back again to the, the first one. So the, there is about a 100 factor now for the same part of the body. So, so up, up to now, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, this is uh, we will see the the relationship between so we have we had one uh, ten times uh, we had different things now we have hundred times we have, we have octave 
parameters. So it's, it's quite a mess to trying to understand all these things. And I'm coming back to, to what you asked about tomatis. So that there are two ways that uh, you can hear uh, uh, sound frequencies. So, and in fact, there is external sound coming through the tympanum here. And then there is another way which is directly to the uh, internal ear. And in this internal ear, there are a lot of small airs which are moving according to the, 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 the frequency of the sound. And they are, these are connected um, with nerves to the brain to, 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 to tell you which kind of sound you, you are receiving. And uh, in fact, it's very important to, to notice that there, there are two ways uh, of receiving sound. And these two ways of receiving sound uh, will also uh, help us to, to analyze what's happening inside the body. So, in fact, the, the blue curve will be related to the external of you and uh, the red curve to internal, your, your, uh, what's inside of you. So, so it's the other and you, in fact, if you, you analyze this. And um, you... That's the reason why when you are um, recording your voice and you play it back, you say, oh, it's not me, it's, it, it, it looks different. It's because you're, you're also uh, receiving the frequency of your voice uh, inside your, your head, uh, like, like a, a resonant chamber. And it goes directly to the internal ear. So that's the reason why your voice looks different uh, when, when you hear it from a, an external recording. So up to a certain frequency, which looks... So as you get higher in the frequency spectrum, that's when it's a little harder to hear internally. Is that true? I say it again. Uh, yeah, maybe a question to make sense. But uh, in other words, what you're showing us right now is a healthy, is a healthy representation or a healthy human, uh, the differential between the air pressure and the internal conduction of sound. And that the red line is essentially following the blue line, but at a lower amplitude. No, uh, well, well, well. I I have to explain more. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, in fact, this is uh, on the top here. This is uh, a normal, but but living things are not normal. Right? So it's, so it's an average of a lot of of uh, of persons to draw this curve that Tomatis has done, and we make. A very, a very small difference between the two curves, uh, just to let them um, be seen all together. Otherwise, they will be uh, superposed. And uh, that's the reason why we make a small difference between the two curves. And uh, unlike um, in uh, medicine, uh, in medicine, when you are looking at this kind of graph, it, the normality is a flat, it's a, 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 an horizontal line. But uh, it is not the, uh, the reality. It doesn't represent the reality. These curves represent exactly the way that you are catching the, the frequencies. Because for doctors, it's easier to, to see the difference between a straight line than between these kind of curves. And in fact, uh, there is a reason. The reason is that in this part here, so the top part of the curves, uh, this part represents the frequency uh, we are communicating with. So it's better for us to receive um, this frequency uh, with uh, with um, uh, much accuracy and um, uh, the patient with a bigger perception, but higher frequencies are quite disturbing. So normally we do not receive uh, this higher frequency 
with uh, the same amplitude and in the same for the lower frequency we we are not uh, we do not like to to be disturbed by uh, the um, the engine of the fridge and uh, the the truck passing through the uh, your road and things like that so this is the reason why this is this shape of the hearing test and there is a relationship between the lower frequency of the body and the, the high fre frequency of the body, as I explained. And here in the lower part, this is uh, an example of an earring test. And do you see left ears, right ears, and you see the difference. So the, it, what we can see in this, uh, this kind of graph here, you see there, there is a lot of missing uh, frequencies. And this means that between 250 and uh, 150, so between this part and this part, there is, there is something which is, which, which is not healthy inside the body. And again, at, at 4,000 also. So probably the, this person had a problem with teeth or something like that. Well, wow. <laughs> but yeah, and you will see that, uh, well, Tomatis has made a good relationship uh, between this frequency, and it's quite good, uh, it's quite good relationship between the frequency and the bone and between the frequency and the, the organs. And again, we can make the same kind of relationship with a, a voice analysis and make the relationship between the different part of the body and the voice analysis. And as you told me, uh, you were used to, to work also with GDV uh, pictures. In fact, what I'm doing with uh, a lot of my patients is making the free test. So I make a GDV test, uh, a nearing test, and a voice analysis. And it's quite amazing that most of the times there is a beautiful correlation between what we see in the voice analysis, in the hearing test, and also in the GDV. And one, once we have the same thing in the free kind of test, well, you must be sure that there is something somewhere. If we see it only in one, so maybe it's, well, but, most of the time we, we can cross the, the free um, the free test and it's very very interesting yeah the well the one that is really really looks pretty clear is um the bottom left there when you are looking at the anterior side of the body and you can see the red line yes, all the way to the more. left how do you interpret yeah. that <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh uh, that's my oh yeah oh yeah yeah that's the the thing that I I I, I love the best. Uh, well, in fact, I'm I'm very uh, interested in uh, laterality, and uh, this is the a, a graph displaying uh, the difference between uh, what uh, the, well the spectrum uh, of the left ears and the right ears, and I draw it on the body, and. Uh, in fact, you, it's, it's very, it's, it gives me a lot of information, this kind of thing, because when you, the, the biggest uh, information, in, it's where something is crossing, yeah, like, like it is here. And there you can be sure that there is something there. And it's, it's very interesting because uh, it's a test that I ask also my patient to do that uh, it's to, to compare the, the laterality of the different parts of the body. And uh, by just uh, placing left and right hand on each other on different parts of the body, uh, sometimes it's inverted from one place to the other. Uh, you, sometimes people uh, catch the, the phone on the left end uh, uh, or the right end, it depends. And so you, even when people told you that uh, I have, uh, uh, there are uh, left end um, user, uh, they, they, you, you can find right, uh, right end uh, 
inside the body on the different part of the body and and uh, also that it's uh, sometimes uh, a different part of your life you can uh, you can change the the and i was very interested by, by this because uh, for myself um, all the things that i have learned uh, before four years, I was left hand, and uh, and after this, I began right hand, and it was related to uh, a very big stress. Okay, so the, these were the the first relationship that, that we can see on the web when we are looking for the different frequencies related to the chakra, but there is another way of showing it because the chakra are going from from uh, front to back uh, across the body and so there uh, we can you can find also but it's not easy to find but you can find also this kind of relationship and i was very interested by uh, this relationship here which is done by um, a, a french guy which is called tony seron uh, who, who makes a, a, a relationship between uh, what's happening in the chakra, with the frequency of the chakra, and also with Ida, Pingala, and, and Sun Chuma. And I was very attracted by this representation. So I, have, I, I make some research about it and try to find more information and test it. And uh, in fact, well, this is the 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 relationship with the music notes and uh, there is some somebody else which is called michel laroche which is a guy which is um making a healing session with tuning forks and he got very very beautiful results it's very very powerful and uh, these tuning forks are related to these music frequencies so there are two two uh, two references which are quite good about this, and also I, I continue searching to to make some validation of this model. And uh, this is the the old um, device from Dan, uh, in which he was measuring the the, the co art coherence, but also the emotional state. And uh, it was a, a peak, which is the, the size of the peak was related to the, the coherence in the, in the heart. And um, the horizontal scale from 1 to 0.5 uh, was going from, um, how was your emotional state? From intellect at 1, and then you go to 0.6, which was in the heart. And in fact, 0.6 uh, in the heart, it's a G square. So again, we, we get uh, confirmation of this. And uh, now we have uh, made, uh, an, in, my, in my new app, uh, we have made again the same kind of um, uh, analysis that Dan has done with his previous device and we can make uh, the emotional balance and me measure empathy between two person, but I will show it uh, more later. And also the, the latest confirmation is that, again, with Nogier, uh, he said uh, that his 20 hertz uh, frequency, which is an E uh, music note, was related to the ARA, so to the second chakra. So again, again, confirmation about uh, this model. And where and, do you see the ARA point? Because there seems to be a little, there's different um, definitions of where it will say the second chakra is, and some people place it lower in front of the sacrum, and some people place it higher behind the navel. So where are you seeing it? Yeah, somewhere there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, but what is what is what's important here is that uh, the music notes, so the, the which is close to to this part. So. The, so th for me, th this kind of uh, representation should be fine. And so I began to, to try to work with this uh, representation. And uh, this is uh, a small app uh, that I've made, but it's, it's much a game that uh, a very scientific app, but it's working fine. And uh, it's, 
extracting the the art beat, the art art rate frequencies, and and applying this kind of uh, uh, analysis here, I'm drawing what's happening inside the, the body at the different chakra and see how the energy is moving from, uh, from one part of the body to the other. And uh, also in the other app, which is I Thrive and uh, I Thrive Stress Management, uh, uh, we can also make some kind of music notes or frequency analysis uh, here. And uh, this is what's happened uh, for me when I stay a too long time in front of my computer you see all the I'm in my head so the resonance is in the upper chakra and uh, a lot of uh, resonance is missing in the, in the lower part of the body and what is very interesting is that uh, when I leave my my desk and I go for a walk outside and I make a recording of what's happening inside my, my body, it's all the other ones which are alighted. So the, it, it means that you have to, to, to do a lot of different things during your day to, to make the resonance to, to your complete body. And this is on the right, um, a long time, a long term analysis. So this is a night analysis. Uh, and, uh, there are different uh, colors according to the different music notes which are coming. And uh, you see the different, uh, part, uh, appearing the different part of the body uh, and you, you, the different cycles inside your, your night. And uh, this is uh, what we can do with this app. And uh, I think that uh, I already mentioned in the previous uh, presentation and that uh, uh, I have made made a recording of um, a yoga nidra, and this is the recording of your, the yoga nidra here, and it's almost the same kind of shape as the the first part uh, of the night, so uh, the, the first deep sleep uh, phase. This is, this is pretty important. Uh, so for folks listening that don't know what yoga nidra nidra is, this is yogic sleep. It's, uh, you can think of it as something like a, a one hour practice in Shavasana where you're laying on your back and you go through subtler and subtler uh, techniques to become more aware of what's happening. And as you do that, you're slowing everything down. And so what you're showing here is that if Yoga Nidra is done correctly, that it's having the same physiological effect on the autonomic nervous system that the first portion of your sleep, which is the most critical portion for cellular recovery, for yes. healing, for autophagy, mitophagy, for the immune system, uh, anything that has to do with the physiological maintenance and repair of your body is also happening if yoga nidra is done correctly. Yes, yes. That, and in fact, on the lower part, you see the, the different music notes, so the different frequency uh, which are uh, coming, uh, and the same thing here. But what is very important, too, is uh, the, the top curve here. And uh, this top curve here, what the, uh, the light blue, Part which is appearing uh, means that you are really in. Uh, it's a, a way of analyzing the, uh, the HRV and the art parameters to to say that you're in in the very deep sleep phase. So you see the, here during the night. This is an, a complete night analysis, and you see the first part, a lot of uh, of deep sleep, and then some other part are coming but much slow much uh, smaller and and here you see during the yoga nidra you you stay there all the time so it's it's really nice so you did talk about the the uh the math and how you measure this and i think you were saying that it's the very low frequency otherwise known as vlf portion of the hrv spectrum uh over the high frequency 
portion of the spectrum, the HF. Is that correct, or is it yes, the other way around? Yeah. Yes, yes. And yes. and and so yes. my question is, what makes a bigger impact in accessing this deep restorative sleep, having a lower VLF or a higher HF? I really don't know. No, I, I cannot. Um, I cannot say. Uh, in, in fact, you know that I, I have tried a lot of different way uh, of analyzing what was happening inside the, the heart rate and the uh, variation, and uh, this is the the best um, response that I get. So that this kind of analysis was, was the analysis which, was, and also I I cross with a few. Um, uh, book reference uh, saying the same thing, but well, exactly the reason I don't know. I, I really I, don't know. But I'm very we, interested in sleep, and that's why I'm I'm, mm. I'm drilling in on this point uh, because when it comes to sort of standard HRV analysis, the VLF represents your represents a lot of the. Um, on a biochemical level, a lot of the uh, like HPA axis activation, a lot of catecholamine activation, things like dopamine, norepinephrine, uh, adrenaline activation. And the high frequency portion is uh, essentially vagal tone. It's the vagal, it's like the, it's the vagus nerve activation. And so it makes sense that having the VLF low and the HF high would contribute to very deep, deep restoration. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think your analysis is perfect. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, there's a lot of ways, and for me personally, I, you know, there's a lot of ways to increase high frequency or vagal tone without having to sleep. You can uh, put your face in cold water and that will do it. Or you could uh, take very, very long exhales, and that will do it. There's you know, a million ways to stimulate the vagus nerve, but it's, I find, much harder to decrease VLF because now you're looking at the hormonal system yeah, and the yeah. biochemical response of fight or flight. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know... It, it's not easy to understand uh, VLF, LF, and HF. And uh, when you look in the, in bibliography, uh, there are a lot of different things. Uh, really, really. Uh, and well, it's interesting to to play with it and to make some ratio and see what's happening and see where, if we can find uh, some some information. But uh, it's it's not easy and uh, in fact uh, i think that um, the body is, is very complex and so to to say that uh, vlf is only this lf is only this and hf is only this it, it's but but i think that your analysis is is is, is very very beautiful so but in any case people could get the app and you you use a chest strap is that is that the hardware that goes along with this? Uh, well, for the for um, I drive. Uh, well, there are two ways. It, it depends. If you want to make uh, a short term uh, recording or uh, short term session, like uh, like um, uh, a briefing session, uh, trying to to see the heart coherence, it's better to use. Um, a finger sensor that I, I, I've shown in the, one of the first slide because uh, it will um, show you the well maybe I can if you ask me I will go once uh, well in fact you see here this is a, a briefing session um, about uh, the sacrocranial uh, rhythm and uh, of the top in red, you have HRV, which is increasing, decreasing, and and on the the lower part in uh, yellow and blue, uh, you have in fact the um, LF 
wave in blue from HRV, and in yellow, the LF wave of uh, the pressure wave. And once you are really in a beautiful, coherent, uh, internal coherent state, um, you will have a perfect fit, you see, between these two curves. And it means that the electrical part of the, the heart, which is uh, uh, HRV, is in perfect phase with uh, the, the, the blood uh, pressure, the blood pressure wave. So when these two waves are uh, in perfect uh, correlation, in perfect uh, phase. Wow. And this is with this kind of uh, of sensor you 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 place on your finger and uh, and so you you can you can get more information that only with uh, HRV because here you have also the pressure wave and it is it's easier to display the the craniosacral wave yes uh, you explain short term longer term recording for sleep you would use a different hardware piece. Uh, yes, for for sleep and for well, let's say more than uh, twenty minutes or uh, half an hour uh, recording, it's better to use a polychest trap. Got it. But then you can only get uh, HRV, unfortunately. Okay. But but well, we are not measuring the same thing, and uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And this is um, a recording that I have done a long time ago with a previous device. And uh, in fact, you, you see, uh, let me stop it. This is HRV, and uh, in blue, uh, dark blue, this is the, um, uh, the breath. And it's a very uh, small breath, uh, slow, frequency, uh, low frequency breath. Uh, according to the, the, the sacrocranial waves. And uh, on the right part here, I have, um, I, di I display the, the resonance uh, with uh, all the different parts of the body uh, according to the, the scheme that I just show. And you see what, when you breathe and at this very slow uh, rate frequency, you see that you are going really from the top to the bottom and then going to the top again, you see the, all the, the things that are lighted, you're going up. It's, uh, each time you, you're breathing and breathe out, it's this very slow rhythm. Wow. And th these are three free kind of analyses here, but uh, yeah, I see, I can, can show you. Then, this is a very important thing. Um, it's a book which has been released a couple of months ago. It's very, very recent research, which is done by a Swiss guy and, and his uh, woman, uh, Stefan Cardino and Catherine Martin. And they, they publish a book about, well, a long uh, research they have done. Um, they are well known for um, uh, about um, geobiology, uh, feeling energy, uh, and, uh, energy in place in, in church and, uh, and things like that. And uh, they, have, as they have spent one year of um, checking with their student because they have a school of ge geobiology and they're, they're very sensitive uh, student and they're also very, very sensitive person. And they spend one year of sending frequencies to the body and uh, asking all the, the person what you feel and where. And so they they made a completely, new map, a completely new map of all the frequencies inside the body. 
and I have a chance to to meet these two persons and to work uh, with them and c comparing our different and findings and uh, and it, it allowed me to make a very very big step in understanding what's happening in the body and uh, again uh, well they they have from one earth here on the lower part of the body and up to eight and eight hundred on the top of the body so again completely uh, well a little bit in in a in a um, in relationship to what was done before, but also different uh, from what uh, we had done before. So we have, up to now, discussed about uh, mathematics, music, uh, the ratio, octave to 1.5, uh, 1.2, 1.25, it is of, uh, this is a fifth, uh, 10 factor, 100 factor, but we didn't talk yet about 1.6, which is uh, the gold number. And uh, then, uh, as explained, uh, is equation, which is uh, demonstrating that uh, in, in the universe there is, there is some kind of, of scale, um, uh, with different step and each of the frequency which is appearing of the different step uh, is in golden ratio with the previous one and well it did demonstrate it with a, a lot of things well i don't i will not come back to this part but what's important is that if i'm using uh, is scale and also well explaining in cycles per minute for some part of the frequency which will be uh, easier to to explain you see the uh, the frontier between alpha and, and theta brainwave it's also the same thing as the the down frequency uh, two step of the down frequencies also uh, again uh, about schumann frequencies and um, uh, we have also we talk about noje we have also noje here <laughs> its frequency and if we go down to lower frequency we will have the breath of a child the, the breath of the adult a sacrocranial wave which is measured by, by one school of uh, sacrocranial therapist which is about 10 per minute and another school which is my school which is about six per minute well in fact these two schools doesn't agree at all about what they are measuring but in fact they are just measuring the same thing but they are tuning their uh, radio to different stations that's all but what they are measuring is, 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 is quite right is correct and then when you go to lower frequency you go to the um, the the frequencies of the emptiness of the brain ventricle so the lcr and you see here a picture of the brain ventricle inside your brain can you explain this a bit more uh, you mentioned it well it was it was uh listed in a previous slide emptiness in the brain ventricles uh, you're showing the ventricles in this animation in the bottom left, but explain what is meant by emptiness in the brain ventricles. Yeah, in fact, they are they are filled with uh, liquid, and uh, and and then the the liquid is spread out, and uh, this this is done when you're quite healthy and not stress. Uh, this is done uh, a different kind of cycles which are quite low which is about uh, one two per minute it depends and and this is the 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 lcr uh, liquid which is uh, coming uh, which is built inside and and spread out and so, uh, so you're saying that when you're breathing at this rate of one breath per minute that there is no cerebral spinal fluid in the ventricles? Uh, no, it's, it's still working. It, well, in fact, the, when you're healthy and not, not stressed, because when you're stressed, this, uh, uh, this, um, this cycle is, is not good at all. And uh, when you're... When you're breathing 
at this rhythm. You have to, uh, you have to breathe according to your feeling of your body. So it's not you who decide where to, when to breathe in and when to breathe out. It's your body. If you try to do a, a low frequency breath of one per minute uh, by counting uh, up to 30 and then da uh, down to 30, uh, you cannot do it. You're, it's it's too strong to do. But if you make the connection to your body and let your body do it, uh, it will do it and it will not be difficult at all. But you, when you say, okay, but when you're writing here, emptiness in the brain ventricles, does that mean there's no fluid in there? Uh, I don't think so. It's just... Uh... Yes, well, there is a moment, yeah, yeah, yes, not, not uh, nothing at all, but it's uh, a part of the, the cycle where it's uh, much, uh, there is much liquid inside and uh, a part when there, is, when there is less liquid inside. Okay. Okay, so it's like the blood pressure, you know, uh, when you, when you, so the pul the blood pulses uh, I have um, shown a few slides ago. Uh, when the the pulse is is in, on the lower part, it doesn't mean that you don't have any blood uh, in your vessels. It means that the pressure is lower, but there is still blood. Okay, got it. It's, 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 it's the same thing for. So the it person. refers to the pulse, not to the volume of the fluid there. Yeah. Yes, it's it's like a pulse, but but a very slow. That's what I explained on the very first Got it. slide. That when when we are talking about frequencies and rhythm, we are used to to have high uh, high frequencies, and in fact, this is a very low frequency. So it's very very hard and very difficult for us to understand. But it's it's just uh, uh, like a balloon, which is. Uh, uh, we begin bigger and begin smaller and bigger and smaller, but uh, it doesn't mean that there is nothing left inside. Again, this is just the size which is changing. You got it. Mm -hmm. So, um, when we take uh, a voice analysis, and um, we are uh, the, and from one one hundred to well, let's say ten thousand hertz, and we zoom on a part of the, the voice analysis, we will see that there are, it's, it's almost the same kind of shape which is appearing in the, uh, the part regarding 100 to 1000 and the part from uh, 100 to 10,000, you see? So the, it, it's quite fractal. And uh, it's, it's very interesting because uh, there is a, it, it is related to the, the relationship between the different frequencies in the different parts of the body. And so that, that's why I, I, I talk about the, uh, the way that the, the, the body was like an hologram. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, what we were looking for with our uh, different apps is try to to understand the relationship between all the frequencies inside the body. Here, this is what we are uh, looking for uh, in the brain wave. So we are all we are also looking for some kind of specific relationship the, between the peaks which are appearing in the different part of the brain. And uh, the the beginning of my research with Dan was regarding the heart coherence and uh, this was previously done by Dan with a, a very old device and what he was measuring it was the cascade that was appearing between the peak and in fact this cascade we can explain it by uh, just uh, displaying the, in a different way the, the peak and see the relationship between the different peaks, so the position between the different peaks, the size, the, the corresponding size between the peak, and it, it represents some kind of, of curve. 
and the shape of this curve will be related to the coherence we, we find in the heart. And this is what Dan uh, was measuring, and that this is what we are measuring also in our new app. Uh, we are just looking th the shape of this curve. And when we have a beautiful shape of this curve, which correspond to a perfect um, golden ratio between the peak, uh, we, we get a beautiful peak. And the size of the peak uh, is related to the coherence uh, in the heart. And we can also measure it uh, like an empathy training between two people. And when these two people um, are um, in empathy, you see the, the, this is the, the flame in my app, and you see the empathy between two persons. So they are, they are both in their heart, which is around 0.6 hertz, and uh, with a beautiful uh, coherence peak, and uh, well, they, they are, they are in, in resonance uh, all together. Now, what, what instruction do you give them, if any instruction, in order to uh, empathy lock? Oh, well, there, there are different ways to do it. Uh, touch each other uh, with their hands, looking each other in their eyes. And uh, once there is this kind of, of communication, most of the time, the, 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 these people are coming close to, to each other. If people are in empathy, if they don't like each other, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. It's not to you every couple, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, so I was wondering, I guess I was wondering if the, these were people who were uh, naturally empathetic towards one another or you had given them some training in order to uh, well, it increase depends. empathy. It, it depends. Well, it's better. It's better if people uh, have uh, empathy, if they don't have, and if they're completely in their head because to to have empathy you have uh, you have to be a little bit in your heart in your in your connection with your body and uh, we have made some tests with people who are completely blocked in their head and uh, it's not they cannot go uh, you know as far as as you remember i've shown uh, previously uh, this kind of graph uh, which was maybe i can go back and Oh, 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 it was a long time ago. Uh, yes, here. Yeah, okay. Uh, now you see, it's going from 1 to 2.5. And uh, 1, you're in your head. And the more you will go 2.6, the more you will be in your heart. And uh, when people cannot go to their heart and they are completely blocking their heads, it's not possible. Nothing is happening. Where, where was I? Here. OK. So, okay. so this was, uh, again, talking about uh, what we were looking for. So the, the relationship between the different waves inside the body. And uh, we didn't talk very much about the, the golden ratio. And in fact, the golden ratio, as uh, the golden number, has a very uh, special property. It's that it, it can be used as to add or to multiply. And uh, you, you get the same thing. And it's a very, very important thing because this leads to, uh, well, the, the first of all, the, the golden ratio in, in nature and uh, in, uh, in heart. Uh, you see the, this is the, the shape of, of a golden ratio se sequence here. And you get exactly the same thing in some uh, uh, architecture like, like Parthenon in, in Greece. You, you get the same thing in shells. You get, this is the, a part of the internal ear and uh, you and what is very important is that because of this add and multiply uh, property it uh, when you have a lot 
of different frequencies which are in golden ratio, it's, it's built a constructive interference. And uh, you see the, from, and this is uh, created what uh, they call the scalar wave. And I will show it here. You see, this is a transverse wave on the left. Uh, I'm losing my mouse, okay, here. And uh, when all the frequency of in these waves are in golden ratio, it leads to this longitudinal wave, which is here on the right, which is like a, a tsunami, which is moving. Uh, and uh, this is a scalar wave. And it's very, very important that uh, th this relationship between the, the different frequency, which are part of a, a frequency wave. And in fact, the, there are two uh, possibility to, to, to mix frequency. You can add them or you can multiply them. If you add them, uh, these are four frequency here, and you will get the, the uh, resulting wave with, will have this kind of shape. If you multiply them, you will have well, another kind of shape. But now, if you have frequency which are in perfect golden ratio, you will get pulses. And this is very important because pulses is life. We have most of the time talking about waves, but pulses are much, much more uh, important than waves. And this is what we are, yes? You want yep. to ask a question? Yeah, regarding these pulses. So are you saying that these pulses are are um, longitudinal waves. In other words, these pulses are scalar waves. It looks like, yes, yes. It, it looks like that uh, the, there, is, there, there should be a relationship between pulses and uh, longitudinal waves. That's, that's uh, uh, what, you know, these are sim simulation here. And, uh, and while I, I, will, I was trying to understand uh, what was happening when the waves were in golden ratio and according to the add and multiply uh, property. And uh, in fact, it, it leads really to pulses. And in fact, it, it's, it's quite interesting because, um, well, of course we have the pulses uh, of, uh, of our heartbeat, but we also find uh, pulses uh, uh, everywhere in, uh, in the universe. There is uh, um, a, a discovery of a new uh, planet um, uh, a few, well, one, one year ago, or something like that. And they, they, they record the sound of the, of the planet. And it was really like uh, Woody Woodpecker. So it was pulses, and uh, also the when you are looking at the, the solar wind, uh, it's also pulses uh, coming out, and not uh, some uh, not like a sine wave, but it's a, the, the, there is a, something which is coming out of the sun, and then it takes minutes, and then something again coming out from the sun. So it's pulses. I, I think pulses is really the. The, the, one of the most important thing, and and I really believe that pulses are created from uh, from this famous scalar wave that I just showed. I see. So their pulses are more a result of the of the scalar wave, not necessarily the scalar wave itself. Yes. Yes. Well, but, you, you know, we are discovering, we are crossing information. Uh, well. That's, that's where I, I'm now uh, about my, my research and my crossing information. I see. What, what we see inside the body is that there are a, a, a beautiful relationship between the different frequency and uh, it's going, uh, when a frequency is increasing, uh, it has an, an influence in, in resonance with uh, higher frequency, but also with lower frequency. Mm. But, uh, well, what I think is that uh, the, the more you will use lower frequencies, 
the more you will an have an influence of, uh, on all the higher frequencies. So th this is the reason why um, we are using, uh, as, I, as I explained in the beginning, in one of the first slides, I, I, um, I, I show you um, the relationship between the, the base frequency of all the, the, the different systems. And the, the much the system, or the more the system will be uh, complex, the lower will be the base frequency. Yeah. So uh, when we are working or uh, changing or um, well, uh, activating a, a, low, a lower frequency, the more we will add uh, an effect on uh, all the, the system. Got it. Uh, so this is uh, again the the flame in mind app in in which we were uh, trying to measure the, the the ratio between the the different peaks in the the, the two brain uh, the two brain and uh, when Dan asked me to uh, <laughs> to to make the programming uh, of this um, this app. In fact, well, at the beginning it was quite easier because I just wanted to get the, to extract the, the information from the brain and to display it. But the, the next step was to try to, to, to see exactly the, the result of deep, deep, deep meditating state. And it's not easy at all when you're programming uh, to, to go directly to deep meditating states. <laughs> so it was not easy for me to check uh, my programming because the, when you're programming, most of the time something is going bad. You're you're a little bit uh, stressed and uh, you're not relaxed at all. And and so I was looking for a, a way to uh, to go much easily to a deep meditating state. And the first thing that I, I tried was to, to build a, a copper pyramid, um, which is with very uh, beautiful uh, ratio. You see there, there are a lot of sphere inside. And this is, a go uh, in fact, it, it is um, a Russian pyramid, new kind of pyramid. The, the, the Russian uh, has built them uh, with this new kind of shape. And when you look inside, um, th there are beautiful golden ratio. All the sphere are in golden ratio. So it's a very uh, big compression when you are inside. And if you place the copper pyramid on the uh, Atman grid, uh, your much, much grounded in that there is a very, very big compression inside your, your body, which help a lot to, uh, to go to, to a relaxed or meditating state. You say you place it on a ley line? I'm sorry? Did I'm you sorry. say you place the pyramid on a ley line? Um, on, on, um, a crossing point uh, between um, the, the earth grid to Atmat, Atmat uh, grid. I think it's Atmat. Uh, uh, Achtman. Achtman. Yes. Uh, it, how do you identify that? Or you can feel it. Well, if you have, uh, you're a little bit sensitive, uh, you can feel it very, very easily because you're, when you're in the middle of a grid, uh, your, your body is very. Um, light so you, you feel free and, and when you're um, just uh, on the crossing point of these lines uh, you feel very heavy so it's, it's quite easy to to make a map uh, inside your house or your garden to see exactly where uh, this crossing point is. Mm. and and in fact um, the sh well the shape you see uh, it is according to the uh, the display here on the left, but the size is also very important because uh, in um, in music, uh, when you are using a, a triangle, 
and you hit the triangle, the, so uh, the sound coming from the triangle will be different according to the size of the triangle. And here it is the same thing. So we have built the pyramid uh, according to, again, to Dan equation, to, to, to be in a resonant frequency uh, according to Dan equation. What's the height? Uh, about two meters or something like that. I don't remember exactly uh, because I, I built it them a long time ago. Yes, I think the height, yes, it's about two meters. And this, this pyramid is working fine, really fine. Hmm. And well, the, the next step, um, I, I was previously using uh, sound, trying to, uh, to have some influence on the body and also binaural beats. And, you know, uh, in, in music, uh, what we call uh, music beat is that it's, it's when we have uh, a very small difference in two, in two frequency between uh, one channel and the other. So here we are using a headset with left ear and right ear. And with, if we are using a, a small difference between the two frequency, let's say for 440 and 440.1, it will make what they call a beat of 0.1, which is the difference between the two frequencies. And you see here, uh, this point one beat will will be a six uh, time per minute uh, frequency, and this is the shape of what's happening. So the sound will disappear and then coming back and disappear and coming back and disappear and coming back, and so it will create a movement between your two ears, but. Most of the time, you, 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 don't, you don't hear it, you don't feel it, because it's very small, but your brain catch it. And this is um, binaural sound, uh, how they are doing. And so what I have done, uh, as we were working, I already explained uh, that we have inside uh, our body the, um, the, the famous Mayo wave, which is a, a pressure wave uh, inside the body, which is about six times per minute. So I create um, a cascade of golden ratio according to Dan equation, and I introduce a beat of 0.1 hertz. And uh, in fact, it was very, very uh, powerful to... Yes, it, it, it was very, very interesting to to have the, the, the pyramid and also the, the binaural sound. And this helped me a lot uh, to, to go very fast, in, uh, very quickly in a, in, in a deep meditating state. And, and like that, it was easy for me to check my, my programming. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, Have you tried 432 and 432.1? instead of 440? Oh, um, well, there are a lot of things to explain about this, but uh, it, it, it will take too much time, <laughs> but m maybe another time if you want. But uh, in fact, 432 and 446 is al almost the same thing. Uh, regarding to the, to what's happening in the body, but um, but but it, it's much. Uh, in fact, it is much related to to the frequency inside the body, the four thirty two, than the four forty. But uh, well, there, there are a lot of things to say. I have already made a, a video about this, and uh, maybe we can talk it uh, talk about it another time if you want. But there are a lot of things to explain uh, to to be sure that uh, everything will be explained correctly and yeah. understood correctly. Okay. And you see, uh, as as I explained that the, the binaural beat, in fact, the the Tibetan boil. Uh, when you make a recording of a Tibetan boil it's very with a stereo mic, it's very interesting because you will see a, uh, also a beat between the, the, the left and right channel. You see that it's 180 degrees uh, beat here. 
between the, the left and the right channel of uh, the, the recording. So when you don't know it, you don't uh, hear it. But when you know it and, and you uh, make a, a Tibetan board sing, uh, you will hear that there is a movement of the sound uh, also inside the room from left to right. And this is very, a very slow um, beat frequency. And again, the, the, this is why these Tibetan boils are very uh, powerful. First, first, because they have frequencies which are in resonance with a specific part of the body. But there is two way of, um, of making the, the resonance with the body. The, the first one is the specific frequencies of the Tibetan boil regard to the different part of the body. But the other one is also this beat, which is also related to small frequency inside the body, like the sacral cranial waves, the emptiness of the ventricles. And then. Yes, and what probably this is uh, something which will uh, be very interesting for you because uh, as a yoga teacher um, you're a lot working with uh, relaxing and meditative state and in fact it seems that there are a few kind of ways to 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 go to to meditate take or to relaxing state. The first one is a very slow breath and even no breath at all. And it was uh, mentioned by Isaac Bentoff. We, we made uh, experiments a long time ago on a uh, person, uh, on yogi, which are almost not breathing in, in very deep meditating state. And he has built a, a specific device which was measuring the, the movement of the body. And uh, when he made the recording of the movement of the body with uh, a, well, a normal person, which is a normal way, he got this kind of shape here. So the, the big amplitude of the wave is uh, the breath. And there are some spikes and peak which are related to the, the heartbeat. And when he was uh, measuring the, the person in deep meditating state, he got this shape here on the lower part of the screen. And so he got uh, a frequency of about uh, seven hertz. And he tried to understand it. And one of the explanations that he gave is that um, when he look at the body and try to, to understand how the body was working according to the heartbeat, and he, he noticed that the aorta, um, when the aorta from the heart was going down, there is a, a split in two parts in, for the two legs. And in fact, this is kind of a wall which is reflecting the pulses which is coming down because of the, the split in, in two parts here. And he, he noticed that, uh, in fact, when the body is in uh, this kind of deep, uh, relaxing state, um, there is the uh, reflection of the, so the pulses, which is coming back from the, the wall here, uh, is entering in, in some kind of um, resonance between the, the pulse which is coming down. And this was create this, creating the, the famous standing wave of about uh, seven uh, cycles per second, seven hertz. And it seems that the heart and the lung are talking to each other. And uh, he, he said that there are five kind of oscillator inside the body. The first one, we just uh, talked about it. The second one was uh, the brain. And in fact, the brain is floating in a fluid, which is the, the spinal fluid. And the brain has a piezoelectric property. And regarding to the, 
the movement, well, the, well, the, the frequency movement in, inside the body. So the, the brain, uh, according to this frequency of the movement, will create an electromagnetic field. So this is uh, the, the second oscillator here. And this oscillator will induce another uh, oscillation also in the ventricle of the brain. And these ventricles of the brain are, um, well, just between the, the two left, the two parts of the brain, the left and the right. And there are a lot uh, here in, in blue, a lot of uh, nerve uh, system between left and right uh, brain. And when these um, um, ventricles are, are moving, it creates uh, a, a connection between left and right brain and uh, this connection between left and brain, right brain will synchronize two brain. And so the, the re result is that there will be an electromagnetic wave which is uh, created uh, around the brain, around the head. And this is uh, another way to, to, to explain, to, to show it. And this is on the um, the sensor, uh, somatosensory uh, motoric part, you see here, here, in, in this part here. And in fact, if we are looking at the, well, the different frequency we talk about, so we have just what uh, Bentoff mentioned, which is seven cycles. Uh, per second, and it's, it's perfectly the one of the frequency from Dan equation. We have also the the, the famous Mayo wave, which is um, a pressure variation uh, inside your blood vessel, which is still there even without any breath. So, uh, and we have also the we talked about previously the. Uh, the frequency of the, the emptiness of the ventricle. So we have, we see we get three different frequencies which are in perfect golden ratio. And so it means that when you are in this kind of state, you're, um, you're creating a, a scalar wave again. Uh, but we, are, we talk a little bit about it before. It's a, the low frequency sign breath uh, which is related to the, the coherence in the heart. Uh, so it's, it's briefing on the Mayo wave uh, uh, at about 0.1 Earth, what we, we already talked about. And the next one is, uh, well, the, some kind of yogi uh, breath, which is um, in, in resonance with the, um, the, the, the frequency uh, the, of the emptiness of the brain ventricles. And what is quite interesting is to, to see what's happening when you're briefing in this very, very uh, low frequency uh, breath. You see here, this, uh, on the top, it is uh, HRV, so the frequency of your heartbeat. And on the lower part uh, on the screen, this is the breath in, in, uh, in blue. Normally, when you breathe in and out, when you breathe in, your uh, heart rate increase. When you breathe out, your heart rate decrease. So this is a normal kind of breath. And here I'm uh, going in um, sacrocranial um, um, wave uh, breath which is about six times per minute. This is one minute between the, the two uh, wide vertical lines. Mm -hmm. And you see that the HRV is increasing, but there is still a relationship between um, breathing and breathe out. And from this point here, I jump in the lower um, frequency, which is regarding to the emptiness of the ventricle, which is about 1.5 per minute. Here you see the very, very large and, and slow breath. And what you see is that, uh, in fact, there is a, uh, an opposite way of um, displaying uh, HRV. You see here, HRV is uh, increasing 
when uh, breathing in, and here it's exactly the opposite. In this part, this is what's happening uh, when you are using a, a very very slow breath. And the next thing um, I I should talk about also is uh, um, about the caduceus breath, which is uh, another kind of breath. Well, in fact, if you take a pendulum and uh, make move the pendulum, there are two points of rest uh, on the opposite part of the, the movement. And you can display it uh, on, a, on a sine wave here with the point of, of rest on the top and on the lower part. And uh, well, there are, in fact, different way of, of breathing. You can make it like a perfect sine wave or you can make a square wave. Well, there are a lot of things that, uh, that can be used. But you see these point of, of rest are on the top and uh, on the lower part. And in fact, if we induce some kind of caduceus breath, or what, what Dan uh, called the caduceus breath, it means that at the end of the caduceus breath, all the point of rest will be close to each other. And this is making some kind of compression, which uh, help you also uh, to to access to a, a very relaxing state. And this, uh, this was what uh, Dan shown, and this is what we uh, we can uh, display in our app. You see, the, this is the HRV, and then here we are beginning a caduceus breath. This is HRV in red, and this is the coherence uh, here um, on the top part of the, the display. And you see that all the waves inside the body are uh, according to the, this kind of shape. What is the formula for that breath? Uh, it's a, 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 a 1.6 ratio. So you, you breathe in and breathe out for, let's say, uh, eight seconds. The next one will be five seconds. The next one will be three. The next one will be two. The next one will be one. This is, this is a very, but the, the app uh, can help you to do it, or you, you just can count. Uh, uh, and uh, above uh, eight, it's about it's twelve or thirteen. I don't remember, but uh, yeah, you 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 are inducing a slow breath, and then uh, shorter, 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 and then you you get this kind of shape inside your body. And when you arrive at the end, uh, you you really feel. Uh, very, um, very relaxed. So you because do that you, one time, you don't repeat it? No, well, you can do it a few times. You can do it a few times, uh, one after e each other. But it's better to, to have some... Uh, to, to, well, you, you do it with your, your breath, your breath cascade, and then you let it go for, uh, let's say, one minute. You... Uh, you uh, you, you, you have the, the good feeling of uh, what a, a is happening inside of you and then you can do it again uh, the next mi minute or you can do it uh, a few times. It, it's nice. It's a, a quite interesting thing. Okay, so uh, I think that I have summarized a, a lot of the, the latest information that I have crossed and um, um, I hope that it will help you to, um, well, to understand a little bit more about all the how the frequency are working inside the body and the relationship between the different frequency. And uh, because at the beginning of my research, it was not easy because all this information seems so different. And in fact, it seems that they are all related to. Wow. Well. Thank you so much. That is, that's amazing. <laughs> what, what an achievement to bring it all together. Uh, do you have time for questions? Uh, yes, sure, sure. I wonder if you have seen any interesting results in GDV as after doing uh, certain, certain experiments, whether they be with the binaural beats or the caduceus breathing or uh, 
had, do you have any interesting before and after results from any of your interventions? Well, well, I'm, I'm using the DGV quite often, um, but as, as I mentioned in the beginning uh, of the presentation that uh, uh, I don't use it alone. I'm, I'm using it also with um, a voice analysis and uh, hearing test. And uh, what I, I'm mostly using it for um, uh, with, with tomatis uh, therapy. So hearing uh, specific uh, music and specific sound during uh, a few weeks, and then we are measuring before and after. Uh, and well, we see a lot of, of difference, but I'm also using the, the GDV uh, before and after uh, healing sessions. And uh, we have uh, healing sessions um, regarding, well, uh, healing session with ants like uh, uh, sacrocranial therapy, but also um, when um, sending frequencies uh, with plasma like therapy. And uh, we, are, we have also uh, uh, mentioned that there are a lot of difference between and after. Uh, with the GDV, and it's quite a, it's quite a good um, de device. But there is, and I, and I talked about it a little bit in the beginning of the presentation. There is now a new device, which has been designed by Stefan Cardino, who made uh, this map uh, of the body that I, I explained before, and. He, is, uh, he just created a completely new device, which is, well, in a way working almost in the same way that the GDV, but uh, which is much more powerful than the GDV. Hmm. And um, we have uh, worked a few days together by, by also uh, trying to send um, some specific frequency, uh, to the body uh, and measuring with his device before and after. And what is very interesting with his device that it can all, it, well, you can measure uh, a person, but you can also measure uh, an animal. Uh, you can measure a, a room, but you can also measure a group of person. And we make a few of ex experiments uh, by, while sending uh, specific golden ratio frequency related to the body to uh, with plasma device uh, inside the room and um, in fact we we measure the group before and after well these 10 minutes uh, of frequency session and it was a very very big difference uh, in the group um, before and after Wow. With, with his device, yes. Yeah, there, there is an influence. The problem is always uh, <laughs> that we see something changing, but um, it doesn't mean that it is, uh, the, the problem inside the body is completely fixed. So uh, something is recovering, but um, some, some days after it must... Uh, uh, come back again, and uh, this is the, the, the most difficult part <laughs> because well, most of the problem we have inside our body are also relation uh, in relation with the emotions, and uh, if you don't get rid of the emotion, it, it, it's coming back. This is one of the main, main problems. Yeah. With your hearing and voice analysis, is that a a proprietary system or do you use somebody else's system for that oh no it's it's very uh, well we, I, I have built a device um, which is working on pc uh, which is drawing automatically the the hearing test uh, but in fact you you can uh, you can do it with um, a sound generator and uh, 
which is sending different frequency and you can draw, draw it by your hand, uh, by uh, the graph by hand. But you, but first of all, the most the, the difficult thing is to, to calibrate it. And uh, there is a, uh, a device which is quite expensive, uh, which is uh, pre-calibrated for, for this kind of, um, uh, of hearing test. But it's only sending the the frequency and a different uh, volume level, which allow you to to draw the curves. And for the voice analysis, it's very simple. You just use a, um, a professional uh, recorder. Uh, well, it, it, well, it should be a, a very um, sensitive um, system and uh, a professional system but then there are a lot of uh, devices uh, and also free apps uh, on pc or mac that uh, allow you to to display the the shape uh, of the spectrum but you need but you need a, a, a more sensitive system a more accurate system than uh, uh, the the CD um, uh, frequency uh, acquisition. You need you need to to use a professional uh, recorder, which is uh, instead of sixteen bits, which is twenty four bits. And, uh, Got it. To have a, a more uh, ac more accurate uh, uh, frequency spectrum. You mentioned to me. Uh, in a different conversation about some movement bone conduction experiments that you're doing with uh, yoga asana listening to certain frequencies using bone conduction headset is that something that you can discuss yes sure sure well well in fact the um, well as i was working uh, as a tomatis practitioner uh, I had the chance to uh, to be uh, in a European um, relationship between the different states uh, regarding uh, tomatis, and so we ex exchange fr uh, from different country what the way that we are using because. Well, everybody is using it for something else for a little bit differently and and uh, during this uh, exchange of the people from different country i i i have discovered that uh, in in italy they were uh, using also this um, music therapy so the, the tomatis therapy while uh, making um, some very small movement uh, on the floor. So, so people were lying on the floor and they were making small movement. And, and I, I had the experience to, to test it. And uh, it, it looks like me very, very powerful to, um, to enter in relationship with uh, with what's happening inside your body to feel exactly what's happening and in fact uh, well i i uh, made some research about it and then we i'm now working with a yoga teacher making a, a specific uh, workshop uh, so with very very small movement and also using these um, music uh, therapy frequencies, uh, but with only bone um, bone uh, headset. So uh, it's it's make directly the relationship into the internal ear, and so you have a better and a faster connection to your body, and it. Um, it's very interesting because um, it helps a lot to make the connection to very small movement in, inside the body. And this uh, small movement, when, when you're making some practice, but uh, with feeling what's happening inside the body, you make the connection to your fascia. And uh, in fact, the, the, the fascia are. Um, 
very related to um, to stress and to um, uh, pollution. And when, uh, but but fascia has the property that it can be uh, rebuilt in a very short time. So what we are doing with this small movement and also using this uh, mu this kind of music therapy to help to to go much faster to the sensation inside the body. Uh, so it's it it's really clean and rebuild the fascia. So uh, when a fascia is, um, well, corrupted, let's say like, like this, it, it, it becomes very um, uh, fixed, very fixed and uh, uh, shorter in, in length. And this is the reason why uh, old, uh, when you look in very old uh, woman, uh, there is a big fascia in the, in the uh, in the, the chest and uh, when this fascia is um, well was not uh, we, is not again uh, flexible uh, and it's uh, very fixed it's um, it's shorter and so this is the reason why this woman um, the, the body is not uh, vertical anymore because uh, of the tension inside this fascia and you can uh, by making s some uh, very slow uh, tension inside your, your fascia or with so very uh, little movement uh, in, from the body, you can clean the fascia and give uh, the fascia back to uh, uh, flexibility and, uh, and movement. Hmm. Wow, got it. It's amazing. Uh, I think last question is, can you use... Can you use the bone conduction headset with binaural beats? Yes, sure, sure. Is it, is it uh, the efficacy any different than a well, regular headset? Uh, the, well, you, you know, the, the problem uh, with most people is that, uh, well, this is related to the the stress society in which we are living uh, sometimes people don't like to make the connection to the body and don't like to so when you are using uh, this bone conduction headset uh, if people are while open uh, it's it's very strong it's much stronger than a normal headset but it can be it can um, um, be disturbing for for people who, are, who want to stay in their head and not to want, want to go to the body. But it's much much stronger to okay. use uh, because you're talking to the, the as as I'm I maybe I can back I can came back to the one of the first slide. Um, well, because. In, in a short of time, short time, I'm explaining a lot of different things, but uh, it, it's not possible to explain everything. So you, you remember that in blue, this is the, uh, the, the sound coming through yep. the tympanum, so for, from the external part. And in, in red, it is directly coming uh, to the internal ear, like like one, uh, the way that we are listening to ourselves. And in fact, what is very interesting is that the relationship between these two curves will show you will will show the relationship between you and the other. This is you in red, and these are the others. Hmm. And so. When you have this kind of shape here, the red one here is above the blue one. So it means that this part of the body is in protection. So this is the distance between you and the other. So the, it, so the, 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 the red curve is above the other one. So this means I, 
I, I, I protect this part. I, there is a protection between the, the most of the time it's an emotional protection. But there are a lot of things to say about uh, Tomatis in the way that. Uh, but to, you, you see, the analyzing on the different part of the body, the relationship between these two curves can give us inf uh, information about uh, the, the relationship we have with us and the others. So from internal and the external. Patrick, thank you again for sharing all this. If listeners want to uh, learn more about you, uh, what's your website contact info and, and all of that? Best uh, website is uh, craniosacralapp.com. I can uh, put that in the show notes so everybody's got it. Okay, yes. Cranial Sacral I can, I can send you the link uh, and I got you can uh, place it, yes. Um, th this website is really related uh, to the app because uh, all the app that we have designed uh, were app to help people uh, to let's say to make the connection to what's happening inside the body and to recover feelings that we have when we are a child and then we are as we are living in society we we lose it but you can you can by well also by making yoga and uh, there are a lot of ways to to, to make this connection again. And uh, like you, you just asked me, how do you know where to place the, the pyramid? So it, it's quite easy. It's, it's quite easy, but you have to be a little bit confident with your feeling and recover all these kind of feeling. But just uh, feeling how, how your body is, uh, uh, is, is feeling inside what's happening inside your body and uh, like you know there are also kinesio uh, tests uh, you can make with the body but you can also make this kinesio test by yourself just by feeling what's happening inside your body just by if you want to to check um, what you're buying to eat or uh, some pills you want to take and then you you want to 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 check if the uh well let's say an essential oil is pure um natural things of there are some kind of um, um chemicals inside you, you just uh, learn to to take it in your hand and see how your body accept it or not and you, if your body feels that it's fine, your your body will expand and you will be, will be uh, you will feel very light, and it's not good for you. Your body will will be very heavy. You will feel very heavy. But this this is are a lot of things that you have to uh, well, to try and to, to try to feel. Uh, and each each time you you feel you feel more and uh, you can test more you can feel everything you can go uh, you you can feel the the trees in nature and uh, well a lot of things you can feel the what's happening in the ground you can feel the the water you know old people now we are in a very uh, difficult society but when people were uh, connected to nature and you know, when you're talking with all uh, very old people they we live more in connection with nature they will tell you that uh, it was very often that they were asking uh, people to find water in the ground or things like that so and it's it's just uh, increasing the sensitivity it's like it tasting good wine mm -hmm. it's just to practice and practice and then uh, you will f finally say it's a chateau margot <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's just practice because uh, i think we have everything in, uh, inside ourselves to to get uh, all this feeling